We're going to grasp the uh, cotan of theta here, and, and again, we're going to realize that the cotan of theta is really the cosine of theta. Just like with the tangent, we found it as a fraction over the sine of theta. Okay. And what happens here is, <clears throat> wherever the cosine is zero, the sine is going to be one or negative one, so we're going to have a zero point here at zero degrees, uh, the, let's see, at, at 90 degrees, excuse me, the cosine is zero. Remember when the unit circle, this is the cosine of theta, sine of theta. So at 90 degrees, or pi over two, we're gonna have, this is gonna be zero here. Also at negative pi over two, the cosine is zero, looking at these um, from zero to pi here. Now, whenever the sine is zero, the cosine is going to be 1 or negative 1, so it's going to be undefined and we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So I look for where the sine is 0 at 0, so I have a vertical asymptote here. And then at pi, um, the sine is 0, and so I have a vertical asymptote here. And also at uh, negative pi, if I'm here and the angle goes around like this all the way to negative pi, the um, uh, sine is zero, so this is undefined, or the cotan is undefined. And there we have a vertical asymptote here. Now, the only difference is, does it go up this way or down this way? Well, from zero to pi over two, remember it's all students take calculus. All of them are positive here of the sine, cosine, and tangent. So uh, the, ta uh, the tangent and the cotan, the cotangent's the reciprocal of the tangent, so that's going to be positive. So it has to be positive from here to here. In other words, it has to be above this theta axis. So the only way it can go is like this. Now from pi over 2 to pi, only the sine is positive. So the tangent and the cotangent are not. So it has to be negative and go this way. Now, same here. Between 0 and negative pi over 2, we look 0 and negative pi. Only the cosine is positive, not the tangent or the cotangent. So it's got to be negative, so it has to be zero here and has to be negative going down this way, between here and here, zero and negative two pi. Zero and angle, negative two pi. And then between negative two pi and pi, notice the tangent is positive, but so is the cotangent, so it has to go like this. And you get these branches that look like this. This is one period. Notice the period of this is pi. So we say our period is pi, period, equals pi on the cotangent, just like on the tangent. And there's an infinite number of these branches. They go on forever like this. So there's one there, and there's you know another one over here, etc. and they keep going. Usually when I have students graph, I say one period, and they usually graph this central branch, although you can graph from here to here if you like, and just get this part and this part, as long as you graph one period.